But when a black woman calls me baby, there is so much. It's because innately, inherently, human beings, most mammals, if I'm being honest, want to be part of a group, want to be part of a community, want to have a, a, a system w within which they belong and they have a role and they are appreciated by the community for the role that they play. And white culture is not the best at this. Like I used to watch like TV shows with my mom, I'd watch these dramas and there'd be like a, a you know, a character arc where the teenage son is super depressed and he's got all of these different psychological issues mentally and stuff. And you know, he's, he's planning a school shooting or some shit like that. And the support that his mom offers is to like crack the door open this much, knocks ever so lightly and then go, Jonathan, and then close it. Or like sit on the end of his bed silently and go, you know, your father loves you, right? What? <laughs> like it's, it's duh. Of course, of course it feels like mountains are being moved for you when you feel genuine care from somebody because you come from a culture where people act fucking befuddled by each other's emotions. I don't think it's a coincidence that the diagnosis rate for, for different mental illnesses is so much higher in like white people than it is in, in POC communities. And yes, I do. I think that that's partially because of the fact that like as a stereotype, a lot of POC communities don't believe in mental illness. But I think on the flip side of that coin, I think that there are a lot of, let's say, let's say non POC communities that view any sort of distress on the part of their child, any sort of mental health issue on the part of their child as something that can only be fixed by a professional. I would see the way white kids were treated by their parents and I remember thinking to myself like how angry I would be if my mom were like that to me. If my mom spent more time talking to mental health professionals about my problems than she did talking to me about my problems, yeah, I'd be I'd be pretty fucking I'd be I'd be more fucked up emotionally than what I currently am. Because I would perceive that as oh, she doesn't even care enough to try herself. You know what I mean? I'm angry because she did something and she's taking my reaction to her action as like a sign that I'm broken and that some professional stranger needs to come in and put me on pills so that I stop being upset with her when she does shitty things to me. Nah, nah, <laughs> no. <laughs> you know what I mean? I 100% I, I understand how that could push somebody further and further and further and deeper into their mental illness, deeper into isolation. I understand how that could make somebody distrustful of anyone who ever tries to help them. I remember finding it so strange that there were these families of people who didn't, who like, who didn't say I love you. You know what I mean? Like if you, you know, if you're, if you're nine and you can't say I love you to your mom, who, who can you love? Who can you love if you can't love your mom at goddamn, you know, eight, nine years old? If you don't have a culture that allows you to feel comfortable expressing affection towards people with whom you are literally genetically related, who the fuck then? Who the genuine fuck then? I understand why it feels so healing and so special and so wholesome to have somebody who is willing to let you just put your head on their lap and cry and they rub your back and not try and fix the situation or not give you logical solutions, but just let you express your emotion. I understand why that feels so like, like you're seeing the sun for the first time. If you come from a culture where the way people help is by saying, oh, uh, uh, um, well, we, we, we could find a doctor. Because the way that that would read to me in that situation would basically be like saying, I don't, I'm not equipped to deal with your problems, child of mine. I brought you into this world knowing that you'd have problems and I'm either not able to help you with them or I'm not willing to put the work in to try and learn how to help you with them. Um, I truthfully would rather pass you off onto somebody else so that I don't have to deal with this. Like, I'm not a professional, I don't know how to deal with this, and I don't care enough to learn how to try and help. Just go be someone else's problem and be my child when you're happy and when you're willing to be part of my idea of a happy family and when you're not willing to participate in that sort of uh, fantasy of mine, go be somebody else's problem. Don't bring your problems to me, bring your problems to them. I'll pay for you. I'll just, listen, I don't wanna deal with this. I'll pay for you to make this someone else's problem. Okay, this is, this is not me. All right. Do you know how abandoned I would feel 
do you, you know what I mean? Like, it doesn't surprise me that these these fucking white people and these white kids are, are running into the arms of every warm black lady they've ever met because it's like, you can be all of you here. All of you is accepted here. I don't love you with stipulations. I don't care about you, you know, with caveats. I see, you know what I mean? The human being in me sees the human being in you and, and I understand and I respect it. And you, you lead the way. You tell me what you need and I'll just love you. That's what I can offer is I can offer you this sort of unconditional love that human beings have for one another. That's it. No, I'm, I'm not a professional, but you don't have to be to let someone cry on your shoulder. You don't have to be to give somebody a hug. Is it difficult? Is it, is it emotionally tiring to bear witness to somebody's pain, especially when you don't have a solution? Yes. But part of the comfort of having someone do that for you is the knowledge that somebody would, that someone would sit with you in your pain with no guarantee of, of when it was going to end, simply out of care for you. Because basically one says, it hurts me to see you in pain, and so I either choose not to see it, or I like reject it, or I pass it off onto somebody else because I don't like feeling bad. Whereas the other one says, yeah, it hurts for me to see you in pain, but my love for you is bigger than that hurt. My love, my care for you, my desire to see you come back up here and be thriving again, you know what I mean? That desire is bigger in me than the desire to avoid this pain. I am not burdened by the fact that you would cry on my shoulder. I don't feel I am owed something for the fact that you would come to me to express this emotion because I don't view us as adversaries. I view us as a team. There is no competition between us. When you're doing good, that means the team's net level of how good we're doing has gone up. And I'm happy to be a part of that. Actually, I remember one time I was arguing with an ex of mine whose mom was like, <sighs> like, like when he would get sick, she wouldn't come into the room because she didn't want to get sick either. Like he would joke that when he was like throwing up or something that she would like not even open the bathroom door because she was like, oh, I don't want the germs to get coming. And I remember one time we were arguing and I kept having just banger points because it's what I do. Um, but we were arguing and eventually it got to a point where we were just like, fine, okay, fine, you're right, you win. And I remember looking at him and being so fucking confused and being like, I don't win. We're on the same goddamn team. If you feel like you've lost, that means that my, that, that my team lost. That's not a victory for me. You know, and then we hugged as, as one does. In the video that I, that I stitched, you can sort of hear cracks in her voice. And I'll be honest, it does. It does kind of make me emotional because when you hear that, it's like you can hear the eight-year-old who, who was crying about some shit like, a girl at school today told me that like this member of this band would never go on a date with me. And she's like really upset about it. And her mom just goes, well, that's ridiculous, sweetheart. Come get dinner. You can hear that hurt child that just wishes they had someone on their team, wishes they had an advocate in their corner, wishes they had even a single ride or die. And yes, children often have ridiculous, inconsequential problems, but it's not about the problem itself. It's about knowing that if you called, there is someone who would come running to stand up for you. That if you needed backup, there would be people who showed the fuck up. You know what I mean? That you're not alone. That there are people who would see a transgression against you and take it personally because for them, in their heart, there's no separation between the love they have for themselves and the love they have for you. That's personal. It's the knowledge that someone is defending you in your absence. That there's somebody out there for whom your problems are our problems. Okay? Who said what to you? Excuse me? What? It's having people in your life that refer to themselves as we. Because there's no I. I'm not an individual. We are a unit. <laughs> you know what I mean? We are stronger together and we're gonna have each other. If you grew up with a, a, you know, a cold, unfeeling support network who didn't, who not only didn't have your back, but that you had to be actively wary of, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised it feels like the clouds have opened every time somebody offers you that sort of, of haven. And I feel genuinely sorry for any of us who have ever had to experience what it's like to have fair weather friends or fair weather family.